Neil Marotta joins me now from Indiva. Neil, welcome back. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Neil, you brought some treats. I did. And yeah. they're loaded with uh, hallucinogenic chemicals, <laughs> I understand? Uh, not, not yet, no. Oh, uh, if they ever will be hallucinogenic, and maybe that's a whole other ball of wax. Right. But so they got some weed in them. Yeah, they, they do not yet, but okay. we have here. Because uh, that would be illegal. Uh, where to show these. But these are a couple of bang chocolate samples. Uh -huh. uh, we're going to have a couple of pop-up shops handing these out uh, okay. February 15th, 16th in Toronto. Right. Uh, we were handing these, these out at the Lyft conference. They are unmedicated. We, you know, we're not allowed They're to They're unmedicated. Sell. At this point, they are unmedicated. So no THC, oh. no CBD. So far. Thank you. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. I love dark chocolate. Yeah, no, so, I know. I, I so tried this James, is the but, you know, actual track chocolate you're going to have? It is. They're childproof, so you might be able to get it open with your teeth. But uh, yeah, th these are the. Maybe we have some scissors fruit. kicking around here. Oh, but, okay. Uh, they are. Uh, yeah, I'm going to pull out my my incisors. <laughs> I think you've got it. If you've got a little uh, a little cut there, it should, be, it should be able to rip open. But uh, childproof. Well, it certainly checks the childproof box. I'm going to try. <laughs> I'm going right. to try a reverse pressure yeah. move. No, so basically, no uh, maybe we need some scissors. <laughs> Medic, any with the uh, Medic. Okay. Can we get a scalpel over here? <laughs> So the, there oh, you go. There we go. All right. right. Good. Look at that. After all that, well, I, I I'm sincerely hope you like it. Exactly. <laughs> Nobody under 520 uh, pounds will be able to yeah, get this. Yeah. No. Open. No kids will be getting that open. That's important. That's so. uh, true. So how are we going to get this stuff to the kids? No, yeah. just kidding. <laughs> That's right. Um, inappropriate. Uh, I realize that. <laughs> okay. So is this the actual chocolate that it you're is. going to use? Yeah. That's the formulation for the dark chocolate. Uh, one of their 14 flavors. This is the formulation for the milk chocolate. Mm. And uh, and so yeah. Oh, we're, that's good. Yeah. We, well, well, thank you. Uh, mm. uh, I wish I could say I had anything to do with the recipe other than just licensing it, but we're really proud that we have licensed the Bang uh, products. Really the most delicious, most award-winning uh, cannabis chocolate on the planet. Mm. Uh, and so we'll be bringing that to Canadians in the fall as soon as we see the final regs and know when we can uh, introduce those products. So uh, we. Go ahead. We, it sounds like you were, you're, still, well, you're still chewing. I was going to say, <laughs> I don't mind talking with my mouth. No, Everybody it's fine. in my house does it. We're basically a nation of swine, but what can I sell? Um, so the uh, claim that this is the best chocolate in all of Canadian cannabis is one that I've heard a few times. Mm, I'm sure you have. So yeah. how do you actually determine yeah. who's got the better chocolate bar? Well, Bang really has won all kinds of awards, Cannabis Cup awards, etc., in the U.S. over the last several years, and so certainly, I you know, because we haven't made legally any cannabis chocolate in Canada, I guess that's legitimacy behind the claim that this is award-winning chocolate uh, in other jurisdictions where edibles have been legal for some time, like California. Hmm. Uh, and so now that it looks like by October, maybe there'll be some delay, which we don't think you know hurts Indiva too much. Uh, it just gives us a chance to build more inventory. Uh, but we're excited to bring these products. So to wait a sec, did you say there's a delay being floated? Well, uh, there was something on Bloomberg yesterday about whether October 17th would be ah, the exact Bloomberg. date. What do they know? <laughs> uh, no, it was a comment kidding. from Bill Blair, so we take that very seriously. <laughs> yeah. Bill Blair, wasn't he a former cop? Uh, I, I don't know, you tell me. I think so, <laughs> yes, that's my understanding. I'm no expert. Oh boy, I'm going to have fun with him when I get him on the show if I ever do. Anyway, so, oh look at that, I'm sitting somewhat out of frame. Um, so what is you what are you anticipating in, in the way of sales initially upon the legalization of edibles? Do you expect right. that your sales are going to be, first of all, mostly medical versus recreational? Is it only recreational? And what kind of volume do you anticipate? It, specifically on the edibles side of things, uh, we know there'll be some medical demand. I mean, we, this has been sold in Canada, the RV Smith case. Patients have the right to consume uh, cannabis in whatever form that they like. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll sell into that channel as we're permitted. But definitely on the recreational side, uh, we know from, uh, let's say, the illicit market and a lot of dispensaries that used to be open and by and large are now closed, uh, edibles is a pretty, let's say, 20% of revenue and, and looking at mature markets in that, in that realm. So if we assume the cannabis market you know, starts somewhere around $5 billion in Canada and grows to 10, we would expect it to be about a billion dollar uh, segment overall growing maybe to $2 billion. And, wow. and so, yeah, just we, in Canada? Just in Canada, yeah. And huh. so, so we think that'll be a combination of things, whether, you know, chocolates or candies or gum. And uh, we have other products like uh, re licensed from Ruby, like cannabis sugar and salt, uh, Ruby gems, which are uh, dehydrated organic fruit with cannabis sugar uh, that oh. we'd like to introduce. So there'll be a really big variety of products out there. Salt the and get the munchies at the same time. Yes. <laughs> well, uh, there are some strains that evidently uh, do suppress appetite, so maybe really? that's, a, that's a trick someone will master. Well, that could be helpful in uh, a weight loss program, I imagine. Um, are all of the LPs ready with 
edible strategies or are you seeing that most of the landscape is going to be dominated at least at the early stage by specialty edibles companies like Indiva? I, for sure the larger companies are preparing and, and there's been some press about that. I can't speak for all LPs obviously, but it's been a huge part of our focus and intentional strategy to license really high quality products, award winning brands, disruptive brands like the Ruby Sugar, this flexible edible idea that you can put sugar in your coffee or your tea mm -hmm. as opposed to being, let's say not forced, but uh, if you wanted to consume an edible purchasing a final product. So uh, we think Definitely there'll be a lot of LPs involved. It's been our specific strategy and we're, we're working very hard to be ready for next fall. Uh, but th yeah, there'll be a lot of uh, competitors and this is why we specifically went after award-winning product to bring to Canada knowing that we don't like science experiments or reinventing the wheel. And let's start with something that's already recognized as being very, very good. Yeah, sure. Um, how do you see uh, revenues ramping for Indiva in 2019? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, we are very close and, and in uh, conversations with many of the provincial uh, distributors. Uh, so hopefully we'll have something on that in, in the coming weeks and months. Uh, and so we kind of targeted around 20 million for full flower revenue. Uh, we'll probably hit that uh, run rate this year, but we'll probably hit that total number in 2020. Uh, we're about to bring on three additional rooms, takes us to 1,000 kilos. Mm. We'll have six more flower rooms, takes us to 3,000 kilos. That should be done next quarter. And then really uh, what we say often now is uh, we're not building a farm, we're building a factory. And so we would expect, while well, we'll be at a 20 million revenue run rate, let's say on dry flower, uh, we think we can do a multiple of that number uh, making edibles and derivatives, concentrates, uh, and you know products like vape pens, uh, tinctures, gel caps, uh, mm -hmm. chocolate, sugar. Wow. Uh, these are the products we think that it takes a much smaller footprint, uh, the higher margin product, and then ultimately uh, they're differentiated. And mm -hmm. so it's a way for us to, let's say, hopefully stand out in the market relative just to, to you know to growing and, and selling flour. Right. So does in, is in, remind me does Indiva planning not to grow cannabis? Oh no, we grow. Yeah, you we're grow growing well. right now. Okay. Yeah, we've okay. got uh, you know hundreds of kilos in the vault, and oh. Oh, we are okay. making oil right now through our partner Metafarm. Right, and we're very close to supply. Correct. Yeah, yeah. and uh, we're close to supply agreements with some of the provincial distributors. Okay. Uh, and so hopefully we'll have products on the shelves for Canadians April 1st. That's really our goal to be in the first 25 stores in, in Ontario for April 1st. Well, that's great. Okay. Well, we're going to keep watching the story. Thanks very much for the update. My pleasure.